ever fire off an email and like right away you see it a typo like right there in the subject line uh the worst yeah definitely it's like proofreading even for us it's trickier than it seems in way more complex for ai exactly ai writing poems or like coding a website that's one thing but catching those little logic errors that's a whole other ball game that's what we're diving into today actually this new google deep mind research about teaching ai to proofread or as they put it intrinsic self-correction it's like giving ai that ability to not just give answers but like analyze and refine, you know, its own thinking. Okay, unpack that a bit. We're not talking like spell check here, right? This isn't about commas or anything. Right. This is AI knowing when its logic has gone off the rails, like missing a step in a math problem or code that just won't run. Yeah, exactly. And one thing that makes it so hard is that just telling an AI to be more careful doesn't really work. Right, like be more careful on a school assignment, not super helpful. So what did researchers try then? Well, one approach was training them on huge data sets of corrected answers. Figured they'd pick up the patterns of, you know, how to correct errors. Makes sense. But the paper points out this led to some, well, interesting and not so helpful outcomes. This is where it gets really interesting. Tell me this did not go as planned. Not quite. Instead of self-correction, the AI got stuck in these, like, traps. Mode collapse is one. Imagine the AI is in a rut, always making the same correction, even if it doesn't apply. Okay, I see why this is hard. It's like the AI is overfitting to the correction, not the concept of a good answer in general. Exactly. And it gets worse. There's distributional shift too. Think of it like you cram for a history test, just memorizing dates. You might ace it, but you don't get the bigger picture. So the AI can correct in a tiny set of examples, but can't apply that knowledge to new problems it's never seen. And that's a problem if we want AI that can really think solve new stuff, got to go beyond memorizing mm. to something more adaptable, flexible. Yeah. Okay, so just like throwing more data at the problem, that's not it. What did this paper actually do? Like, is there a better way to teach this whole proofreading thing? So that's where SCORE comes in. It stands for self-correction via reinforcement learning. Much more, I don't know, nuanced than just feeding AI answers. SCORE, okay, I like it. Tell me more. How's it work? Imagine this. Instead of just being like, here's a textbook, figure it out. You actually mentor someone, guide them closely at first, right? Specific feedback. Then as they learn, more autonomy. Okay, I like the mentorship angle. How's that work with, like, code? Score breaks it into two stages. Stage one, building that strong foundation. So we are using those data sets of corrected answers. Yeah, but not just straight up fine tuning. Right. In stage one, the AI gets an initial response it made. It's asked to make revisions. But there's constraints. Constraints, like what? We limit how much it can actually change. It's like, okay, you wrote this paragraph, now go improve these two sentences. Don't rewrite the whole thing. Huh, interesting. So it's focused improvement, not just starting over. Exactly. And by limiting it, you force the AI to really look at its own work. Find the most important spots to improve, like developing those fine-tuned editing skills like a human would. That's really cool. It's like training those self-correction muscles or something. Yeah. What about stage two then? This is where it really gets going, right? Absolutely. Stage two is the reinforcement learning part. Now the AI can revise more freely. No more tight constraints. But key difference, there's a reward system now. Okay, AI motivation. How do you reward a computer program? Not like a bonus, haha, right? It's about reinforcement. Yeah. The system is set up to really, really favor changes that flip a wrong answer to a right one. So if the AI makes a change and the answer gets more accurate, more logical, it's like a little digital good job. Exactly. Over time, it learns to associate those good signals with, hey, I self-corrected well there. It's not just memorizing right answers, it's building strategies for how to find and fix errors. That is so cool. So it's thinking more like, I don't know, a human editor almost, evaluating its own work. Yeah, great way to put it. And the paper suggests this two-stage thing, the constrained learning first, then the rewards, that might be it. That might be how we unlock this whole AI self-correction thing for real. Okay, I gotta ask, how well does SCORE actually work? Like, did it did they actually get AI to self-correct more with this? The results are really promising. Score beat out, uh, like outperformed the older methods on some tough benchmarks. Okay, so like what were they testing on? And we're talking math, has complex problem solving, right? <laughs> and human evil, which is all about coding skills. Not easy stuff. So it's not just like tiny improvements. It's making the AI way better at these things. Exactly. And what's cool is score 
got what they called significantly positive intrinsic self-correction, meaning it was catching and fixing stuff on its own, not relying on us to tell it what's wrong. Which is huge. Like, that's what we've been saying is so hard to get AI to do, right? Think that critically. Yeah, big step forward. And there's another thing about score, the efficiency. The paper said it might actually be like more computationally efficient than some other methods. Wait, so smarter A-N-D, potentially easier to actually use because it's not as resource intensive? That's a big deal. Huge, because efficiency matters. Right. Especially as these AI models, they just keep getting more complex. It was like kind of blowing my mind. We went from can AI even proofread to seeing these results with score, it feels like a turning point, honestly. I agree. And the exciting part is, where could we go from here? We can teach it in these areas, math, coding, what about everything else? It's like, we're moving from AI that just gives answers to AI that's like learning how to learn <laughs> over time. Super exciting. So as we wrap up, I always like to give our listeners something to chew on. The score research, they only did a couple rounds of self-correction with the AI. What if? What if we could do way more? Now that's interesting. Imagine 10, 20, 100 rounds of revision, constantly iterating, like improving its own work. Could we unlock some crazy new level of, I don't know, problem solving, creativity even, scientific discoveries maybe, something to think about as we as we all keep, you know, exploring what AI can do. Thanks for taking this deep dive with us.